Hi everyone and welcome back. In this lesson we're going to be learning about the comparison test. This is a brand new test for series convergence that's extremely useful and fairly intuitive. The idea is that if you want to test the convergence of some series, you can compare it to another series using some kind of an inequality. If that new series is known to converge or diverge, you can sometimes say something about the series that you started with. So let's jump right in with the statement of the comparison test. Sometimes people will refer to this as the direct comparison test, and that's because there's a different way to compare series using limits. We'll learn about that technique in the next lesson. It's called the limit comparison test. For direct comparison though, here's the statement. You have two series, the sum of ANs and the sum of BNs. The indices don't really matter, so we're going to leave them off. Both of the series have to have positive terms. All the ANs are positive, all the BNs are positive. And moreover, we're going to assume that the ANs are smaller than the BNs. So every term of the first series is less than or equal to the corresponding term in the second series. Here's the statement. If the small series, the sum of the ANs, diverges, then the big series, the sum of the BNs, must also diverge. I don't know about you, but to me that feels somewhat intuitive. I mean, if this series is diverging and all of the terms are positive, that means its partial sums are getting bigger and bigger and bigger. They're blowing up to infinity. But this sum over here consists of even bigger terms. The partial sums of the BNs are going to also have to blow up to infinity, and hence this series will diverge. That's part one of the comparison test. Part two says that if the big series converges, then the small series must also converge. Again, this feels somewhat intuitive. If you add up all the terms from this large series and end up with something finite, well, it makes sense that the same would happen for the small series. And that's the whole statement of the comparison test. If the small series diverges, then the big series diverges. If the big series converges, then the small series converges. Let's see if we can put this to use in some examples. The general strategy when using the comparison test will be to compare your series with something that's much easier to work with like a geometric series or a p-series. To see how this can be done, consider the series in example 1. Here we're adding up the terms n over n to the 4 plus 1, where n ranges from 1 to infinity. Okay, well it's not too hard to see that the terms of this series really do go to 0, so it passes the divergence test. It's not a geometric series, it's not a p-series. This may be something that I could integrate, so I'm going to keep the integral test in the back of my mind just in case. But let's first try to see if we can make a nice quick comparison with something simpler. To figure out a good comparison to make, let's take a close look at the expression that we're adding up. When n becomes very large, this expression is going to behave sort of like n over n to the 4. This plus 1 term in the denominator is not going to add very much. So maybe we can get rid of it and find a series that behaves similarly. If I remove this plus 1 from the denominator, the denominator will get smaller and the entire fraction will therefore get bigger. So let's write this down. n over n to the 4 plus 1 is less than or equal to n over n to the 4, which is 1 over n cubed. Ah, okay, we found a simpler expression that's a little bit larger than n over n to the 4 plus 1. If we could show that the sum of these terms is convergent, then by comparison our smaller series must be convergent as well. Ah, but would you look at this? The sum of these terms, 1 over n cubed, from 1 to infinity, this is a convergent p series. It's convergent because p in this case is 3. p is bigger than 1. So since this larger series converges, we conclude that our series must also converge by comparison. Pretty neat, eh? We didn't have to use the integral test. Let's now move on to example 2. Again, we have a pretty ugly looking series. It's definitely not geometric, it's definitely not a p-series, and it's not something that I want to integrate. So we'll try the comparison test. I'm going to try the same sort of strategy that I used in example 1. I'm going to look for the dominating term in the numerator and the dominating term in the denominator and try to remove everything else. In this case, my dominating term in the denominator is definitely 2 to the n. It's the only term. In the numerator, the dominating term is going to be the exponential function. That grows a lot more quickly than n. So I'm going to try to throw out this n term. Notice that if we remove this n term, the numerator is going to become smaller, right? So my expression, the square root of 9 to the n plus n divided by 2 to the n, is bigger than or equal to the square root of 9 to the n 
over 2 to the n. I could simplify this because the square root of 9 is 3. So I could write this as 3 to the n over 2 to the n, or equivalently, 3 over 2 to the n. Ah, okay, so we found a simpler expression that's a little bit smaller than the one that we're actually working with. If we could show that the sum of these terms is divergent, then our larger sum must also be divergent. But of course, this is a divergent geometric series. The ratio is 3 halves, which is bigger than 1 in absolute value. So let's write this down. The sum from 1 to infinity of 3 over 2 to the n is a divergent geometric series, which means that by comparison, our series must also be divergent. Pretty powerful, eh? We avoided a lot of ugliness with this series by making a very simple comparison. I've got two more examples for you on the next slide. Moving on to example three. The series here looks pretty complicated. Root n plus two over n squared plus two. Well, again, I'm gonna look for the dominating terms. It seems like my dominating term in the numerator is root n, and my dominating term in the denominator is n squared. But now I have to remove two things, plus two in the numerator and plus two in the denominator. It's not completely clear how removing these terms will affect the overall expression. If I take out this plus two in the numerator, the expression will decrease. But if I take out the plus two in the denominator, the expression will increase. So it's not so obvious what kind of inequality we're going to use, greater than or less than. To figure this out, let's try to see how the series would behave if we were able to magically remove these extra terms. If we could take out the terms, we'd be left with root n over n squared which is 1 over n to the 3 halves. Ah, now this is the general term in a convergent p series. Here p is 3 halves, that's bigger than 1, the series would converge. Well, in the long run, these plus 2s aren't going to make much of a difference. So my expression is going to behave pretty similarly to 1 over n to the 3 halves. Maybe this is compelling evidence that my series will likely turn out to be convergent. And so I'm trying to find something bigger than this series that also converges. So that'll be my starting place. I'm gonna take my expression and try to make it a little bit bigger by throwing something out. In this case, I could throw out the plus two in the denominator to make the expression bigger. So that's what I'll do. I'll say that root n plus two divided by n squared plus two is less than or equal to root n plus two divided by n squared. Okay, well it's a little bit simpler now, but still not simple enough. I'd like to make this look a little bit more like 1 over n to the 3 halves. But the problem is I can't remove this plus 2, because then my expression will decrease. I'll have an inequality going the other way. So instead, I'm going to be a little bit sneaky here. I'm going to replace this plus 2 with another root n. That'll make my expression a little bit bigger, and it will make it look a little bit more like 1 over n to the 3 halves. Right? I can write this as root n plus root n divided by n squared. If I combine the terms in the numerator and cancel some exponents, I should be left with 2 over n to the 3 halves. Now we should be a little bit careful here, because this inequality won't work for all values of n. It'll only work when root n is bigger than 2. This will be the case for all n greater than or equal to 4, and that's good enough. After all, the first four terms in the series aren't going to affect whether it converges or diverges. In fact, no finite number of terms will affect the convergence either. Doesn't matter if we're talking about four terms or 400 terms. What matters for convergence are the infinitely many terms at the end of the series. So as long as I can make this estimate for all n beyond some point, that's good enough. We can still use the comparison test. Okay, back to our problem. We found a term that's larger than a general term in our series for all n greater than or equal to four. If we examine the sum of these larger terms from n equals four to infinity, we get a convergent p series, right? Well, really it's two times a convergent p series, but multiplying by two isn't gonna affect the convergence. It's just gonna double the overall sum. So since this series is convergent, and the terms in our series are a little bit smaller than these terms, we conclude that the sum from 4 to infinity of these terms here must be convergent by the comparison test. And since those first four terms won't affect the convergence, our original series from 0 will be convergent as well.
So there you go, folks, your tricky problem for the day. Making these types of estimates gets easier with practice, so make sure to check out the practice problems when you have a chance. Okay, on to example four. Here we're trying to add up the terms one over two to the n minus one. Well, if we follow our strategy of looking at the dominating terms in the numerator and denominator, we're probably gonna try to compare with one over two to the n. That is, we're gonna throw out this minus one in the denominator. When we throw out the minus one, the denominator gets a little bit bigger, so the whole fraction gets a little bit smaller. We find that one over two to the n minus one is bigger than one over two to the n. Ah, okay, well this is nice and simple, and it looks like a geometric series, right? It's a geometric series with common ratio one half. So let's write this down. We get the sum from n equals one to infinity of one over two to the n, which is a convergent geometric series. There's just one problem here. Our series is bigger than this convergent geometric series. Well, if you're bigger than a convergent series, the comparison test tells you nothing. You could converge or you could diverge. Either option could occur. But what did we do wrong here? I think we made the right comparison. As n becomes really, really large, it makes sense that this expression will behave similarly to one over two to the n. Well, unfortunately, the inequalities just didn't work in our favor here. And this is one of the downsides of using the comparison test. If your inequalities don't work, the comparison test can sometimes fail. Fortunately, however, as I mentioned at the start of this video, there's another version of the comparison test that uses limits. This limit comparison test will allow us to get around this stickiness with the inequalities. In the next video, when we introduce the limit comparison test, we'll revisit this example. You'll see that this series is indeed convergent.